for all the earth to tremble and the sun had hid its face and all the men that walked with him had turned and run away they crucified our Savior and laid him in a tomb the life that once brought love and hope slipped away that afternoon Satan cleaved with pleasure that day of Calvary for he thought he had won a mighty victory and like him all of the demons of hell began to cheer Oh, but little did they know That the end was growing near One, two, come on, one, two, three This early Sunday morning Just like Jesus said I'm 
know my heart is full of the glory and the wonder of your name. I believe the power that raised you, I believe the power that raised you is alive in me. Ah, amen. If the Lord within my heart can't be contained. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. The rock of my salvation Oh, yes, Lord Yes, Lord I believe I believe the tomb is empty I believe the tomb is empty Yes, I know my heart is full Of the glory and the wonder of your name The wonder of your name I believe the power that raised you Is alive Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, Ooh, yes, Lord, I believe. I believe, Lord, yes, Lord, I believe you're alive in me. I'm going to shout, I'm going to shout aloud to the rock, the rock. alone, Panginoon. Pupurihin ka namin, Lord God. Hallelujah. Palakpakan natin ang ating Panginoong Jesus. Wow, Lord God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, we shout the name Jesus. Oh, by your grace. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your life. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to know you more and more. At sa buhay namin, Panginoon, wala kaming ibang iisipin kundi maniwala kami sa kapangyarihan mo. Dahil nung mamatay ka sa krus, kasama mong namatay, Lord, ang lahat-lahat ng mga pangit sa buhay namin. At nung mabuhay ka, kasamang nabuhay ang lahat ng mga magagandang bagay para sa amin. And we are thankful, Lord Jesus, for your love and for your life. Whoa. Oh, Lord, we praise you, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, If love endures that ancient cross How precious is my Savior's blood 
the beauty of heaven wrapped in my shame. The image of color upon its frame. If having my heart was worth the pain, Jesus, what joy could you see beyond? and pray Hallelujah If love found my soul worth dying for How wonderful How glorious My Savior's cross Victory My dad is paid from death to life and grace to grace. Lord, Ooh, we praise your name, oh Jesus. Now owns that vacant tomb. Hallelujah. How great is the hope that lives in you. Ooh, the passion that holds you held like a rose. The promise that rolled back then and it stone. Freedom is worth the life you raised. Oh, oh, where is my sin? Where is my shame? Ooh, oh, if love made it all to her. Wonder of your grace, how my 
for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Panginoon, hayaan mo na sa buong buhay namin, Lord, hindi namin kakalimutan na merong Diyos na nagmahal sa amin, may Diyos na naging tapat sa amin, may Panginoon kaming Jesus na siyang nagbigay ng buhay para po sa amin. Marami pong salamat, pinupuri ka namin, dinadakila ka namin, niluluwalhati ka namin, O Diyos, sama, sa pangalan ni Jesus. Ito pong aming dalangin. Lahat ay magsabi na, Amen and Amen. for the powerful and spirit-filled praise and worship. Oh, glory to God for this wonderful day. Hi, everyone! Jay Galvez here from Life Giver Metro. Allow me to briefly share with you an interesting view and understanding of the things in giving and tithing. Question! Naranasan mo na ba makapulot ng isang bagay na hindi naman sa'yo o hindi mo pagmamayari? What did you do? Did you look for the person who owns it? Or you took it and kept it in your pocket? How about this? Naranasan mo na ba mapagsabihan na huwag galawin na isang bagay pero pinakilaman mo pa rin. Napabuti ka ba o napasama? It says in Genesis 2.17 that you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. There is a principle in this verse that we need to embrace. Ang principle na huwag pakilaman at dapat ingatan ang para kay Lord. We can see that there is a clear instruction that needs to be followed at my corresponding consequence. Wrong actions lead to serious consequences. Kapatid, we are always free to choose our actions, but we are never free to choose the consequences of our actions. Kaya nga po, nagpapasalamat ako na sa murang edad, inumulat na po ako na huwag pakailaman yung para kay Lord. 
actually my dad taught me and is always reminded me na na everything belongs to the Lord. Nung una, hindi ko po yun maintindihan. But imagine this, we are Adam and Eve. Pinamahala po sa atin ang 90% sa garden. We can have everything, all the abundant things, all the resources, this and that. Everything, except for what? And that is the tree of knowledge. Kung baga, sa sweldo po o pera na natatanggap natin, 10% po ay di dapat galawin. Bakit? Dahil nakalaan po dapat ito para sa Diyos. Share ko lang din po yun sa Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 20. Nabanggit po doon that obey God and He will give life and blessings. Disobey and we will lose both. Sana po kahit gaano man kahirap ang buhay ngayon. Let us not forget to bless our blesser. Let us be reminded that giving is not an obligation to the Lord. For it is the Lord's. Everything belongs to Him. We are just stewards and managers. Yes, our Father is faithful in our lives, isn't He? Then how about us? How faithful are we to God? The question is, gaano nga po ba tayo ka-faithful sa Diyos? Giving and tithing depends on how faithful we truly are. Let me share my short testimony. Wala po akong work, wala po akong income, pero nananatili po akong faithful sa pagbibigay at pagpapray. Alam niyo po, dumating sa point na nauubos yung ipon ko. Nagtatides po ako 20 pesos, 50 pesos, 100 pesos. Pinsan po, 500 pesos or 1,000 kapag po may nabibigay. Hindi ko po yung ginagalaw, buo ko po yung binibigay. At minsan din po, pag wala talaga, nangyahirap po ako sa parents ko para na may mapambigay sa Diyos. Grabe po, hindi ko po inaasahan yung reward ni Lord sa pagiging faithful ko. Matagal na po akong nagpa-pray na makapaglingkod ng full-time at effective. Nagtsatsaga po ako sa laptop ko na namamatay-matay at kailangan nakasaksak lang po. Isang araw, may dumating sa bahay namin, may dala po siyang box. Grabe po yung iyak ko nun kasi hindi ko po inaasahan na yung laman ng box na yun ay yung ilang taon ko na pong pinag-pray. Binless po ako ng laptop at ngayon po nagagamit ko na po yun sa gawain para sa Diyos dahil isa na rin po akong full-time sa church. Pero di po dito natapos ang pag-pray ko at pagbibigay ko. Kundi lalo ko pa pong ginalingan na GG po ako eh. Sana po maging GG ka din lalo na ngayong pandemic. Hindi po galit na galit, hindi po gigil na gigil sa nangyayari, kundi maging isang genuine giver po. At sana hanggang paglabas mo po ng quarantine na ito, ay daladala mo po ang pagkajiji mo na willing it is ang Diyos. Be genuine in your giving to God and to the needy. Or you can plant a seed for the next generation. Kapatid, sana magbigay ka hindi dahil kumita ka, hindi dahil may pera ka, hindi din dahil napipilitan ka but because you are willing and wholeheartedly want to give. And you give because you want to remain faithful and pleasing the Lord. Hindi po ito patungkol sa iyo, kundi patungkol po ito sa Diyos na faithful sa buhay mo. Tara, pray po tayo. Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful day and for the gift of life you have given to each and every one of us. Thank you for all the blessing, Father. Lord, we're sorry and we're asking for forgiveness. Kung minsan po, hindi po namin na ibibigay o na ibabalik ang para sa'yo. Lord, help us to be a genuine giver, lalo na po nitong pandemic. Give us a willing and generous heart. Lord, baguhin mo po yung puso namin. Higyan mo po kami ng puso na gusto magbigay, hindi dahil we want something in return, but because we want to remain faithful in you. Lord, ikaw na po bahala sa amin. And also, I'm praying for everyone, Lord. Give them protection and healing. Blessing upon blessing, provision, visions, Knowledge and wisdom will flow upon each and every one of us, Lord. We're lifting all the praise and glory to you. In the most mightiest name of Jesus, Amen and Amen. Now church, it's time to give and plant a seed. Visit lifegiverchurch.ph slash give. You may deposit your giving to your preferred bank accounts, BDO or BPI. Bank account names and numbers are reflected on the screen. You can also send your giving through GCash using the bank transfer service. You may use the bank account information flashed in the screen. Happy giving everyone! I know you're all excited to hear the word of God. Prepare your Bible, notebook, pen, and your loudest amen. Here's Pastor Gary Galvez to preach God's word today. Good morning, Life Giver family! And welcome po sa ating Sunday service. Isang mapagpalang Sunday sa inyong lahat. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, are you ready to hear God's word today? Tasa kamay, sabi mo, magpapatama ako today. <laughs> Definitely, maraming tatamaan na naman today. 
Magandang umaga po sa inyo. Ako po si Pastor Gary joining you for this Sunday service. Question, posible ba na nakay Lord ka na? Nakay Lord ang family mo pero nagkakaproblema pa rin kayo? Nang asawa mo, ng kapatid mo, ng anak mo? Baka naman napapaligiran tayo ng mga tao na nagmamalasakit sa atin pero yung pagmamalasakit nila ay nagdudulot pa ng gulo. The end does not justify the means. Mataas talaga ang posibilidad. Walang ligtas na pamilya sa anumang problema. Amen po ba? Ang pinag-iba lang kasi ng matitibay na pamilya sa gitna ng pandemya ay kung paano nila harapin ito bilang isang buong pamilya. Welcome po sa third installment ng ating series of Strong Families in the Midst of Pandemic. Let's bow our heads and ask for God's blessing. Heavenly Father, we ask for your help today. I-prepare niyo po ang puso ng bawat nakikinig ngayon. I also pray that you will override everything that I have prepared so that your message will be heard and not mine. Maraming salamat, Lord. May the Holy Spirit be with us. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say, Amen and Amen and Amen. Now let me begin by sharing with you that the Bible is full of stories about imperfect families. Though they're serving the Lord, they're facing a lot of tremendous problems. Actually, kumpara nga sa mga problema natin, mas devastating pa yung mga nagiging problema nila. Sa araw na to, si sentro po tayo sa ikalimang utos ng Diyos. Basahin po natin sa Exodus 20.12. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Ilan dito gustong humaba ang buhay? Ayan. Anong sinabi? Honor your father and your mother. At dyan po, iikot ang ating kwento ngayon. By the way, let me ask you, how are your relationships doing today? Kamusta ang relasyon nyo ngayon sa inyong mga anak? Okay pa ba? Kamusta ang relasyon nyo sa parents niyo, mga bata, mga anak? Friends ba kayo sa Facebook? Nagkukwentuhan pa ba kayo? O baka naman pati sa pagkainan eh, puro cellphone ang hawak, wala nang kwentuhan. How are your relationships with your brothers and your sisters, your siblings? Kamusta? Nagkukwentuhan pa ba kayo gaya ng dati? O meron ba kayong ganong klaseng relasyon? I know just like our family is never perfect, but we can rest comforted by the fact that we have a perfect God and that deserves an amen. Amen? Today, we're gonna take a look at the life of a king's son. His name is Absalom, whose heart is full of anger. Galit na galit. He's full of rage towards his brother Amnon. In as much as he loves his sister Tamar, He is rebellious towards his father, King David. It's so ugly. Napakapangit ng sitwasyon. Napakapangit ng kondisyon ng puso ni Absalom. Pag-uusapan natin yan. And then we're gonna take a look at the people who surrounded him and also his father, King David, who are more than willing to die for the family. More than willing to kill for the family. Kahit magkagulo pa, kahit magkapatayan pa, basta para sa kanila nagmamalasakit sila. So bad ang sama ng sitwasyon. Napakasama ng nangyari dahil sa kanyang paligid. And of course, last but not least, we're gonna take a look at the character of the father, King David himself, who suffered greatly in the process, lost his beloved sons, grieved, cried, yet found comfort in the Lord and exercised forgiveness in the process. Willing siya mag-trade ng life as a parent na natili siyang good sa kabila ng lahat ng pangyayari. Titignan natin ang napakabuting ama at lingkod ng Diyos sa kabila ng lahat ng nangyayari sa Anya. Kaya nga po ang title natin today is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. So samahan po ninyo ako, mahaba po ang kwentuhan natin, pero definitely papaigiin po natin ito. Anim na chapters lang naman ang i-cover natin ngayon. Wow! Grabe! Pero hahamo tayo ng tatlong important principles na makakatulong sa atin sa pag-manage ng ating families in the midst of this trying and pandemic season. So ready na po ba kayo? Simulan na natin. The ugly. Ayan. Ang unang karakter na pag-aaralan po natin ay si Absalom. Yan, yan ang picture niya. Siya ang third and favorite son of King David, hari ng Israel at Duda. Alam niyo ba na tinawag siyang the most handsome in the kingdom? Pag binasa mo 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 25 to 26, In all Israel, there was not a man so highly praised for his handsome appearance as Absalom. From the top of his head to the sole of his foot, there was no blemish in him. Grabe ang kagwapuhan nitong mamang ito. Whenever he cut his hair of his head, 
He used to cut his hair once a year because it became too heavy for him. He would weigh it and its weight was 200 shekels by the royal standard. Five pounds po ang bigat ng kanyang buhok. Alam niyo po ba na kung ano yung kagwapuhan niya sa anyong panlabas niya ay siya namang kapangitan ng kanyang panloob. Ang laki ng problema nito si Absalom na nagdulot ng samot-saring problema sa buong pamilya at sa sambayanan. Kaya pag-uusapan natin muna ang buhay ni Absalom. Number one, mahalaga ang kondisyon ng ating puso. An angry heart leads to a life of ruins. Ang pusong magagalitin o pusong punong-puno ng galit, walang magandang pupuntahan. Nagsimula ang kwento na to sa chapter 13 kung saan ang pinakapanganay na anak ni Haring David na si Amnon nagkagusto sa kanyang half-sister na si Tamar at yun yung kapatid ni Absalom. Ang ginawa niya, nagpanggap siyang may sakit. Kinutsaban niya yung kaibigan niya para pinayuhan siya na ganito gawin mo. Pagpanggap kang may sakit, tapos sabihin mo sa tatay mo, baka pwedeng alagaan ka ni Tamar. Tapos, pag nagkaroon ka ng pagkakataon, i-grab mo na yon at yun ang ginawa niya. Pinagsamantalahan niya po si Tamar. At yun yung naging ugat kung bakit naging si Absalom, si Absalom. Pag-usapan po natin yan. 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 20-21 Her brother Absalom said to her, Has that Amnon your brother been with you? Be quiet for now, my sister. He is your brother. Don't take this thing to the heart. And Tamar lived in her brother Absalom's house, a desolate woman. Alam niyo po ba, pag sinabing desolate, eh, yun yung tulala, tuliro. Wala na, wala sa sarili. Grabe, hopeless, abandoned. Ganun yung naramdaman na ni Tamar doon. Verse 21, And when King David heard all this, he was furious. And Absalom never said a word to Amnon, either good or bad. He hated Amnon because he had disgraced his sister Tamar. Grabe, no? hindi mo rin siya masisisi. Kung bakit punong-puno siya ng galit kay Amnon? Unang-una, dahil nila pastanganan niya at minules siya o pinagsamantalahan niya yung kanyang kapatid na si Tamar. Kaya dapat lang na magalit siya. Siguro dala din to ng parang inaasahan niya na magkakaroon ng agarang katarungan o hostisya sa kanyang tatay na si Haring David na hindi niya siguro nakita o nasilayan hanggang sa nabuo na yung kanyang pagpaplano o masamang planong balakid laban sa kanyang dugot laman, laban sa kanyang pinakakapatid na si Amnon. Tandaan po natin ito. Walang magandang idudulo ang pagtatanim ng sama ng loob sa ating pamilya. Ulitin ko, walang magandang idudulo ang pagtatanim ng sama ng loob sa ating pamilya. Walang magandang ibubunga ang masamang binhi. Ang pangit na saloobin, pangit ang magiging resulta. Huwag dapat nating bibihin, huwag nating alagaan ang galit o sama ng loob. Bakit? Napaka-agli nito. Karamihan po ng magkakapatid, lagi nilang may samaan ng loob. Karamihan po ng mga anak, sumasamaan loob sa tatay. Pero dapat hindi nyo inaalagaan yung sama ng loob na yan. Baka matulad kayo kay Absalom, ng sama ng loob niya led to his ruins. An angry heart leads to a life of ruins. Pangalawa, Mahalaga ang kondisyon ng puso pagdating sa the right godly love nurtures, not kills. Kapag ang puso mo punong-puno ng pagmamahal, nag-aalaga, nagbubunga to ng maganda. Pero sa case po ni Absalom, baligtad. Yung galit, nagpunta patungo sa revenge o paghiganti. Sobrang pagmamahal ni Absalom sa kanyang kapatid na si Tamar. That is a fact. Pero mali yung naging ending mismo ng kapatid niya na nagbalak patayin yung kanyang kuya dahil na muo yung sama ng loob. Nakakalungkot na mismo mga magkakapatid ngayon ay nagpapatayan dahil sa mga malilit na bagay. Pwedeng malalaking bagay. Pero nalimutan nila magkakapatid sila. Kinain sila ng galit ng sama ng loob. 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 23 hanggang 28. Two years later, when Absalom's sheep shearers were at Baal Hazor, Near the border of Ephraim, he invited all the king's sons to come there. Absalom went to the king and said, Your servant has had shearers come. Will the king and his attendants please join me? No, my son, the king replied. All of us should not go. We would only be a burden to you. Although Absalom urged him, he still refused to go but gave him his blessing. Then Absalom said, If not, please let my brother Amnon come with us. The king asked him, Why should he go with you? But Absalom urged him, so he sent with him Amnon and the rest of the king's son. Absalom ordered his men, listen, 
When Amnon is in high spirits from drinking wine, and I say to you, strike Amnon down, then kill him. Don't be afraid. Heaven, I've given you this order. Be strong and brave. Akalain ninyo. Di ba? Dalawang taon pinagplanuhan ni Absalom paano niya patayin ang kanyang kuya dahil sa kanyang atras na ginawa kay Tama. Naghintay lang siya ng tamang pagkakataon na may sakatuparan ang pangit niyang balak, ang pagpatay sa kanyang mismong dugot naman sa kanyang kapatid. Not only galit yung puso niya, punong-puno ito ng revenge, punong-puno ito ng galit. Bakit? Kasi inalagaan eh. I remember my dad. Galit ako sa kanya. Growing up, I was wondering ba't ako lumaki ng walang parents. And then, alam mo, parang kahit ano sabihin sa akin ng mga tao, hindi po, hindi po mapasok sa tenga ko. Nananaig sa akin yung galit ko. Nananaig sa akin, I'll show you. Papakita ko sa inyo. Punong-puno ko ng ganun at ganun yung nangyari kay Absalom. Bakit? Dalawang taon niya pinag-isipan paano planuhin niya. Tandaan natin, ang sama ng loob kadalasan ay patungo sa paghihiganti. Walang magandang ending ang revenge na nagmumula sa grudges. Napakapangit na saloobin. Salo Talagang agling-agling. So paalala po sa inyong lahat, huwag na huwag niyong bibigyan ng puwang ang galit na mapatungo sa paghihiganti. First Thessalonians, sinabi ni Paul, chapter, 15, chapter 5, verse 15, sina, pinaalalahanan niya yung mga taga Thessalonians na na kay Lord na, ano sabi yun, see to it that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Napakahalaga ng kondisyon ng ating puso. Hindi lang dahil galit ka, di ba? Hindi dahil punong-puno yan ang sama ng loob. Ngayon yung pangatlo. Mahalaga ang kondisyon ng ating puso because a rebellious son finds no favor in God's eyes. After siya mag sa lolo niya, tumakbo siya eh pagtapos nun. Nagpunta siya doon sa lolo niya, si King Talmay, hari ng Geshur. Lumipas ang tatlong taon, pero pinagalit siya ng tatay niya. Grabe tatay niya. Mahal na mahal si Absalom. Si Haring David, pinabalik siya, pero anong ginawa niya? Nililang niya ang mga tao, pati tatay niya, niloko niya muli, nagbalak pa siya ng kudita. 2 Samuel chapter 15, basahin ninyo to. In the course of time, Absalom provided himself a chariot and horses with 50 men to run ahead of him. He would get up early and stand by the side of the road leading to the city gate. Nakatayo siya doon, nakaabang. Whenever anyone came with a complaint to be placed before the king for a decision, Absalom would call out to him, What town are you from? He would answer, Your servant is from one of the tribes of Israel. Alam mo gagawin niya? And Absalom would say to him, Look, your claims are valid and proper, but there's no representative of the king to hear you. Unti-unti, sinisiraan niya na yung tatay niya. Unti-unti, sinasabotahin niya na ang kingdom ng tatay niya. And Absalom would add, if only our appointed judge in the land, then everyone who has a complaint or case could come to me, and I would see that they receive justice. So kinukuha niya yung loob ng mamamayan. Also, whenever anyone approached him to bow down before him, Absalom would reach out his hand, take hold of him, and kiss him. Grabe, no? Ibang klase yung pagpopoliticize niya, no? Politician pala itong si Absalom. Absalom behaved in this way towards all the Israelites who came to the king asking for justice. And so he stole the hearts of the people of Israel. Kunti-unti niyang nanakaw ang pag-ibig o puso at pagmamalasakit ng taga-Israel. Alam niyo ba? At the end of four years, Absalom said to the king, Let me go to Hebron and fulfill a vow I made at the Lord, or to the Lord. While your servant was living in Geshur in Aram, I made this vow. If the Lord takes me back to Jerusalem, I will worship the Lord in Hebron. And the king said to him, Go in peace. So he went to Hebron. Bilnes pa siya ng hari. Hindi lang siya pinabalik, hindi lang siya pinatawad, bilnes pa siya. Then Absalom sent secret messages throughout the tribes of Israel to say, as soon as you hear the sound of the trumpets, then say, Absalom is king in Hebron. 200 men from Jerusalem had accompanied Absalom. They had been invited as guests and went quite innocently, knowing nothing about the matter. Hindi nila alam ang nangyayari. While Absalom was offering sacrifices, he also sent for Ahitophel, the Gilonite, David's counselor, to come from Gilo, his hometown. And so the conspiracy gained strength and Absalom's following kept on increasing. Lumaki, nang lumaki ang ginagawa niyang pagsakop o pagpukodita. A messenger came and told David, the hearts of the people of Israel, Israel are with Absalom. Na kay Absalom na daw ang puso ng masa. Then David said to all his officials who were with him in Jerusalem, Come, we must flee. Kailangan na natin umalis. 
none of us will escape from Absalom. Akalain mo, ganun na katindi, ganun na kalaki ang nagawa ni Absalom na i-overtake na ang kaharian ni David. We must leave immediately or he will move quickly and overtake us and bring ruin on us and put the city to the sword. Alam niyo po, let me pause here. Mabigat ang rebellion, lalo na pag nag ka sa magulang. Alam niyo ba, matindi ang kaparusahan pag ang anak ay nag laban sa kanyang magulang. Sa Matthew chapter 15, verse 4, For God said, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. Hango yan sa Exodus 21, verse 15 and 17, Anyone who attacks their father or mother is to be put to death. Anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. Galit po ang Panginoon sa rebellion. Galit ang Diyos dyan. Kaya matindi ang kaparusahan ng rebellious son. Kaya nga a rebellious heart finds no favor or a rebellious son finds no favor in God's eyes. Tandaan natin na ang rebellion ay isa sa pinakamatinding kasalanan sa mata ng Diyos. Huwag mo nang balakin yan. Hindi lang pangit ang magiging dating mo, super pangit ang kahihinatnan mo. Kaya ayon hindi nagtagal, hindi rin nagtagal ang buhay ni Absalom. Saklap ang pangit agi. Ano yung number one? Mahalaga ang kondisyon ng ating puso. Tatlong bagay yun. An angry heart leads to a life of ruins. The right godly love nurtures, not kills. Hindi puno ng paghihiganti. And a rebellious son finds no favor in God's eyes. You will be put to death if you rebel against your parents. Kaya ngayon pa lang, binabalaan ko na kayo mga anak. Huwag na kayong lumaban sa inyong mga magulang. Amen! Napaka-ugly. Now let's talk about the bad. Mahalaga ang nakapaligid sa atin. That's number two. At syempre, may tatlo tayong puntos dyan. Unang point natin, betrayal in family is like a common cold. Ang betrayal sa ating pamilya ay para daw isang sipon o ubo. 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 12, When Absalom was offering sacrifices, he also sent for Ahitophel the Gilonite, David's counselor, to come from Gailo, his hometown, and so the conspiracy gained strength, and Absalom's following kept on increasing. Ang sakla po nito, di ba? Isa sa mga pinaka-trusted counselor ni Haring David, etin rider siya. Sino si Ahitophel? Siya yung tinutukoy ni Haring David sa kanyang sinulat nung time na tumakbo na siya. Okay? Meron siya nagawang kanta o sulat. This is Psalms 55 o ika-55 o 55th na awitin kung saan na-illustrate pati ang relationship ni Jesus at si Judas. That's right. Basahin nga po natin, Psalm 55. Talo na tayo sa verse 11. Destructive forces at work in the city. Threats and lies never leave its streets. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were rising against me, I could hide. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God, as we walked about among the worshippers. Verse 20, my companion attacks his friends. He violates his covenant. His talk is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn swords. Ang saklap, ang sakit. Kung sino pa yung malapit sa'yo, kung sino pa yung minamahal mo, bigla kang tatry durin. Tandaan natin ito. May kabiguan at panulo kung magaganap sa buhay at sa ating pamilya. Dapat hindi tayo nasut- nagugulat na nagkakaroon ng ganyan. Normal ho sa pamilya ang nag-aaway-aaway. Talaga pong nangyayari yan na nagsisiraan ng mga magkakapatid sa kanya para makuha ang, ang atensyon ni tatay o ni nanay. Minsan nga, extreme, di ba? Dapat hindi ka agarang apektado. Dapat ready ka. Dapat handa ka. Dapat hindi ka na nagugulat na tinraidor ka. Bakit? Ganyan talaga ang mundo ngayon. Maraming traidor. Nakakalungkot nga lang. I agree. It's so bad. But it's the truth. Hindi tayo makakaligtas sa panluloko. Hindi tayo makakaligtas sa paninira ng tao. It's not what they do. It's how you deal with it. Amen? Pangalawa, caring without God's wisdom can lead to disaster. Kadalasan, marami nagmamalasakit, pero gumagalaw ayaw sa tingin nila ay tama. Sa paniniwalang nagmamalasakit sila. 
2 Samuel chapter 14, 1, 3. Joab, son of Zeruiah, knew that the king's heart longed for Absalom. So Joab sent someone to Tekoa and had a wise woman brought from there. He said to her, pretend you are in the morning. Dress in morning clothes and don't use any cosmetic lotions. Act like a woman who has spent many days grieving for the dead. So, kinukuncha ba to ni Joab? No? Sabi oh, then go to the king and speak these words to him. And Joab put the words in her mouth. Tinuruan siya ng script. Alright? Umarte itong babae. Bumarap kay Haring David. Anong sinabi niya? May dalawa po akong anak na nagpatayan po. Tapos ito, anong dapat kong gawin? Simple lang naman yan eh. Nabuking din naman sa lang ni Haring David eh. Then the king said to the woman, Don't give me the answer to what I'm going to ask you. Let my Lord King speak, the woman said. The king asked, Isn't the hand of Job with you in all this? Kinunchaba ka ba ni Joab para gawin ito? Ha? Para kumbinsihin mo ko na papuntahin ko na yung anak ko rito, napatawarin ko o iharap ko yung anak ko sa akin? Kinumbinsi ka ba ng, ni Joab na gawin yan? Ang sagot ng babae, Opo, hindi ako makakapagsinungaling sa inyo. Talaga pong kinausap ako ni Joab. Meron pa nga isang pangyayari na nakailam sa desisyon, dala ng pagmamalasakit, itong si Joab. Kapusapan nga natin, sino ba itong Joab na to? Okay? Siya ay nephew ni King David. Anak siya ni Meruwa, Meruwaya, na kapatid ni Haring David at ni Abigail, born of Jesse. Alam niyo ba na yung dalawang kapatid niya ay kinatawag na Kings da King David's Mighty Warriors, si Abishai at si Asahel. So galing to sa pamilya ng mga mandirigma. Military commander, itong si uh, Joab. Okay? Sumikat to to dahil sa victory nila laban sa mga Jebusites na nagresulta ng pagbawi ng Jerusalem. At ito'y natawag ng City of David. Si Joab po ay isang family member na nagmamahal sa pamilyang ito. 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 5. The king commanded Joab, Abishai, and Itai. Maliwanag ang instruction. Be gentle with the young man Absalom for my sake, sabi ni Haring David. And all the troops heard the king giving orders concerning Absalom to each of the commanders. Now Absalom happened to meet David's men. He was riding his mule and as the mule went under the thick branches of a large oak, Absalom's hair got caught in the tree, his left hanging in midair, while the mule he was riding kept on going. When one of the men saw what happened, he told Joab, I just saw Absalom hanging on an oak tree. And Job said to the man who had told him this, What? You saw him? Why did you strike him to the ground right there? Then I would have had to give you ten shekels of silver and a warrior's belt. The man replied, Even if a thousand shekels were weighed into my hands, I would not lay a hand on the king's son. In our hearing, the king commanded you, Abishai and Itai, protect the young man Absalom for, for my sake. Ingatan daw, hindi patayin. And if I had put my life in jeopardy and nothing is hidden from the king, you would have kept your distance from me. Joab said, I'm not going to wait like this for you. So he took three javelins in his hand and plunged them into Absalom's heart while Absalom was still alive in the oak tree. Grabe. And ten of Joab's armor bearers surrounded Absalom, struck him, and killed him. Joab sounded the trumpet. The troops stopped pursuing Israel for Joab halted them. They took Absalom, threw him into a big pit in the forest, and piled up a large heap of rocks over him. Meanwhile, all the Israelites fled to their homes. During, this, during his lifetime, Absalom had taken a pillar and erected it in the king's valley as a monument to himself. For he thought, I have no son to carry on the memory of my name. He named the pillar after himself, and it's called Absalom's monument to this day. Verse 31, Then the Cushite arrived. Ito yung inutusan na na magbigay ng balita sa hari and said, My Lord, the King, hear the good news. The Lord has vindicated you today by delivering you from the hand of all who rose up against you. The King asked the Cushite, yung messenger, Is the young man Absalom safe? The Cushite replied, May the enemies of my Lord, the King, and all who rise up to harm you be like that young man. The King was shaken. He went up the room over the gateway and wept. Akalain mo, patay na si Amnon. Di ba? Nakonsole na siya, nakamove forward na siya. Ngayon, itong anak ko niya, ay gano'ng kasama. Tandaan niyo po ito. May mga jowa na mag-iingat sa pamilya mo sa mga oras na kailangan ng pamilya mo ng proteksyon. 
Kaya mag-iingat ang mga Absalom dyan. Yes, that's right. Yung mga puso dyan na hindi tama, ha? Yung mga kondisyon ng pusong pangit, katulad ni Absalom, mag-iingat ho kayo. Bakit? Magpapadala si Lord ng mga jowab na hindi makikinig sa mga tatay, hindi makikinig sa mas nakakataas sa kanya. Kundi alang-alang sa kanyang pagmamalasakit sa pamilya niya, maprotektahan lang, e eh gagawin ang lahat. Yes! Mapapasama ang sitwasyon. Mapapasama ang kalagayan mo kung ikaw si Absalom. Yan si Joab. Mahal na mahal niya ang pamilya ng Diyos. Mahal na mahal niya ang pamilya ni David. Kaya hindi siya pumayag na hindi pagbayaran ni Absalom ang kanyang ginawa. Na mismo sa kamay niya, he brought the law into his own hands. Kaya kayong mga Absalom na nakikinig ngayon, mag-ingat kayo. May mga Joab kayong katapan. Amen. At pangatlo, mahalaga ang nakapaligid sa atin because God will send people in your life to make sure your family is okay. Si Lord ay magpapadala o gagamit ng mga tao para maitama ang sitwasyon mo, lalo na sa mga panahong kalunan ka. 2 Samuel 16 verse 15 Meanwhile, Absalom and all the men of Israel came to Jerusalem and Ahitophel was with him. Then Hushai, the archive, David's confidant, went to Absalom and said to him, Long live the king! Long live the king! Absalom said to Hushai. So this is the love you show your friend? If he's your friend, why didn't you go with him? Hushai said to Absalom, No, the one chosen by the Lord, by these people, and by all the men of Israel, his I will be, and I will remain with him. Sa'yo po ako, maglilingkod, sabi ni Hushai. Pero kaibigan siya ni Aring David, ah. kasama na sa buong plano nila. Furthermore, whom should I serve? Should I not serve the son? Just as I served your father, so I will serve you. Absalom said to Ahithophel, Give us your advice. What should we do? Ahithophel answered, Sleep with your father's concubines, whom did she, he left to take care of the palace. Then all Israel, I will hear that you have, then all Israel will hear that you have made yourself obnoxious to your father, and the hands of everyone with you will be more resolute. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on the roof and he slept with his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Now in those days, the advice of Ahitophel that Ahitophel gave was like the one who inquires of God. Nakalain mo, yung payo daw nitong Ahitophel na to, eh kala mo, kausap lagi si Lord. Di ba? That was how both David and Absalom regarded all of Ahitophel's advice. Talun po tayo sa 2 Samuel chapter 17. This plan seems so good to Absalom. Ito yung time na hinihingi ni Absalom kay Ahitophel anong magandang gawin. Ang sinabi ni Ahitophel, lusubin natin yung mga yan habang wala silang laban. Sabi niya, this plan seems good to Absalom and to all the elders of Israel. But Absalom, makinig, but Absalom said, Summon also Hushai, the archite, so we can hear what he has to say as well. When Hushai came to him, Absalom said, Ahitophel has given a disadvice. Should we do what he says? If not, give us your opinion. Hushai replied to Absalom, The advice Ahitophel has given is not good at this time. You know your father and his men, they are fighters. And as fierce as wild bear robbed of her cubs. Besides, your father is an experienced fighter. He will not spend the night with the troops. Even now, he is hidden in a cave or some other place. If he should attack your troops first, whoever hears about it will say, There has been a slaughter among the troops who follow Absalom. Then even the bravest soldier whose heart is like the heart of a lion will melt with fear. For all Israel knows that your father is a fighter and that those with him are brave. Grabe, no? At yun ang naganap. Sinunod po ni Absalom ang payo ni Hushai rather than sa payo po ni Ahitophel. Nga pala, sidetrack lang ako. Ha? I discovered this, you know, During the study that I was making, alam nyo ba na itong si Ahitophel ay nagpakamatay? That's right. Nag-suicide po ito. Hindi niya matanggap na ganyan yung sinapit niya rin. No? Na hindi na siya pinakinggan. Kaya pala, gina- yung kanta doon, di ba? Uh, kaya hinalintulad yung, yung Psalms 55 kay Jesus at kay Judas. Kung saan siya ay tinraidor at nagpakamatay. Kasi bakit? Si Ahitophel yung tinutukoy ni Haring David na tumraidor sa kanya at nagpakamatay. Tandaan po natin, magpapadala at gagamit si Lord ng mga husal sa pamilya mo na sa panahong talong-talo na ang tatay mo. E itatayo niya at tutulungan niyang bumangon muli. 
sa panahong dapa na kayo, sa panahong talo na kayo, sa, sa panahong wala ng pag-asa, may darating na husay. Isang mahusay. Now, that is bad. That is Michael Jackson bad. That's good bad. Di ba? Ibang klase, no? So, ano yung number two? Mahalaga ang nakapaligid sa atin. Huwag tayo manibago because betrayal is like a common thing. May maninira, may tatraidor sa atin. Pangalawa, caring without God's wisdom can lead to disaster. May mga joab na ipapadala si Lord na walang iisipin whether plano ba yan ni Lord o hindi, basta babanat lang yan. Iingatan ang pamilya mo. Titirahin ang mga katulad ni Absalom sa buhay mo para tiyaking maprotektahan ang pamilya. At pangatlo, God will send people in your life to make sure your family will be okay. Sa panahong dapa na si Haring David, sa panahong na lumalaki si Absalom, ano nangyari? Pinadala niya si Husay doon para bigyan at maspoil ang mga plan niya. Dahil may plano si Lord na itama ang mga mga. Now, the best part, the third part, the good. Mahalaga ang magulang ay nakailan. That's right. Ang laking impact pag ang magulang ay may takot sa Diyos. Ang laking impact kapag ang magulang ay sumusunod sa kautusan ni Lord. Tatlo lang naman na makikita natin katangian ni Haring David na nagpatunay na siya ay na kay Lord. Unang-una, he was willing to forgive the unforgivable. Second Samuel chapter 14, 21 to 23 and 33. The king said to Joab, very well, I will do it. Kaya yung time na kinausap siya ng girl, di ba? Na nagpanggap, na nabuking niya na may kinalaman si Joab. Sabi niya, very well, I will do it. Go bring back the young man, Absalom. Sige na, pauwi niyo na yan, patatawarin ko na yan. Besides, na may miss ko naman si Absalom. Verse 22, Joab fell with his face to the ground to pay him honor and he blessed the king. Joab said, today your servant knows that he's found favor in your eyes, my lord the king, because the king has granted his, his servant's request. Then Joab went to Geshur and brought Absalom back to Jerusalem. But the king said, he must go to his own house. He must not see my face. So Absalom went to his own house and did not see the face of the king. Alam niyo ba, dalawang taon na natili sa Jerusalem si Absalom. Actually, kinulit niya pa nga eh. Sinunog niya pa nga yung, <laughs> yung, yung bukid ni Joab para lang makuha yung atensyon ni Joab para sabihin, iarap mo ako sa tatay ko. Gusto kong makita tatay ko. Verse 33. So Joab went to the king and told him this. Then the king summoned Absalom. Pinatawag niya si Absalom. And he came in, bowed down with his face to the ground before the king. And the king kissed Absalom. Tandaan natin ito. Walang katumbas na ligaya. Sa isang pamilyang minsan ay nasira o nawasak dahil sa isang matinding kasalanan pero nabuo muli dahil nagawa nilang magpatawaran. O di ba? Ang ganda ng karakter ni Haring David. So good. Dapat walang anumang bagay ang maaring magawa ng anak mo na habang buhay ikagalit mo sa kanya. Hindi dapat ganoon. Oo, nagkakamali mga anak natin. Oo, wait lang, wait lang. Oo, adik sa Mobile Legend. Oo, ang dami mga pangako sa paglilinis na hindi natutupad. Oo, ititigil na daw yan. Oo, ang dami ng atraso ng anak mo. Pero wala silang pwedeng magawa na hindi mo sila dapat mapatawad. Dahil, yan ang tunay na ina, yan ang tunay na ama na nagmamahal sa kanyang mga anak. Amen po ba? So kung katabi mo ngayon yung anak mo, sabihin mo nga sa kanya na, I love you kahit ganyan ka. <laughs> Amen. Pangalawa, bakit mahalaga na ang tatay ay na kay Lord? Kung kaya niya magpatawad, dapat kaya itong pangalawa. Willing to trust again the untrustworthy. At the end of four years, Absalom said to king, let me go to Hebron. Di ba yan na yun? Verse 9, the king said to him, go in peace. So he went to Hebron. Nakalain mo, bilnes pa siya ng tatay niya. Pinatawad na siya. Bilnes pa siya habang siya'y niluloko. Di ba? Binigay ba ng tatay yung tiwala sa anak? Yes! Tandaan natin ito, mga nanay, mga tatay, makinig po kayo dyan. Pag nagpatawad tayo sa ating mga anak, kalimutan na rin natin yung mga atraso nila at igawad natin sa kanila ang tiwala muli. Dapat matuto tayong lampasan ng pagtingin natin sa kanilang mga nagawang mali at dahilan ng pagkasira ng tiwala. 
For example, nagpaalam na uuwi ng alas 10 ng gabi. Dumating alas 2 ng umaga. Tapos pinatawad mo na. Di ba? Naparusahan mo siguro, napagalitan mo, pero pinatawad mo na. Sana naman sa susunod na nagpaalam sa'yo, huwag mong titignan na ganun uli. O, oh, anong oras ka na naman na uuwi? O, oh, ano naman? Eh, dapat baguhin natin ang pagtingin natin sa mga anak natin. Di ba? Hindi yung atraso pa rin nila ang nakikita natin. Remember, si Lord may amnesia and I will remember your sins no more. Di ba? Ano pa sinabi? Na hindi nanunumbat ang Panginoon. So sana tayo, hinihikayad ko lahat ng mga magulang na nakikinig ngayon. Pag pinatawad na natin, pinalampas at pinagbigyan na natin ang ating mga anak, sana naman isama na natin ang pagtingin natin na hindi natin tinitignan sa kanilang atraso o nagawa dati. Ibalik natin ang tiwala. Ang hirap mabuhay o manatili sa isang bahay na hindi nagtitiwala sa isa't isa. A key element in any successful relationship can be founded on establishing trust and confidence with each other. Ibalik ang tiwala. Give a second chance. Give a third chance. Give a break. Give a Kit Kat. Now that is good. Yan ang magandang karakter na nakita natin sa buhay ni Haring David. Hindi lang niya nagawin patawarin ng ginawa ni Absalom. Di ba? Alam mo, nagawa niya pang magtiwalang muli. Marami nagpapatawad pero hindi nagtitiwala muli. How can I forgive when I can't forget? Yung iba naman, they can forgive but they cannot forget. Sumuli, paalalahanan ko po ang lahat ng mga magulang. Oras sa pinatawad na natin ng mga anak natin, baguhin na natin ang pagtingin sa anila. Ibigay natin buong buo yung tiwala ulit. Ang hirap mabuhay na hindi tayo nagtitiwala sa isa't isa or if we don't trust each other. Pangatlo, and this is the last, willing to die for their children. Makikita natin, ganyan yung attitude ng tatay. The king was shaken. He went up to the room over the gateway and went. As he went, he said, Oh, my son, Absalom. My son, my son, Absalom. If only I had died instead of you. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Tandaan po natin ito. Walang magulang ang kahit kailan na is mapahamak ang anak. At kung mamarapatin lang, kung pwede nga lang sa mga ganyang sitwasyon, hihilingin ng magulang, katulad ni Haring David kay Lord, na siya na lang sana ang namatay, hindi na ang anak niya. At yan ang pinakamagandang katangian na dinisplay ni ng tatay ni Absalom na si Haring David na sa kabila ng lahat na gawa niyang magpatawad, magtiwala at handang mamatay para sa minamahal niyang anak. Masakit sa kalooban ng isang tatay o nanay o magulang na mawalan ng anak. At walang magulang ang hindi handang ibigay ang kanyang buhay para sa kanyang anak. At yan yung katangian na nakita natin kay Haring David. Number three, mahalaga na ang magulang ay na kay Lord. Kasi pag na kay Lord ang magulang, kaya niya magpatawad. Pag na kay Lord ang magulang, kaya niya ibigay ang tiwala ulit sa kanyang anak. Kahit ano pa yung atraso nito, at handa siyang mamatay para sa kanyang anak. Sa kabila ng lahat ng ginawa niya. Bilang pagkatapos, lahat ng pamilya, ay dadanas ng problema. Tandaan niyo. Para mapagtagumpayan ang anumang problema, dapat guided tayo ng tamang wisdom. Alam niyo ba si Haring Solomon ay sumulat ng mga maxims, ito ay expressions of general truth or principles. Ito ay tinaguraan proverbs. Marami pong scholars ang nagsasabi na ang Proverbs 3 ay naisulat niya. Di ba? Naisulat niya, inspired tungkol sa nangyari sa buhay ng kanyang mahal na kapatid na si Absalom. At nais ko pong paalalahan ang lahat ng mga nakikinig sa akin, mga anak, Ito po ang sinabi sa Proverbs 3. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. For they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Verse 11, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent His rebuke. Because the Lord disciplines those He loves. As a father, the son He delights in. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. 
First, she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Napakahalaga po na magkaroon tayo ng tamang wisdom. Alam natin ang ikalamang utos kung gusto natin humaba pagawang buhay natin. Or for us to have long life, we should honor our parents. And let me end with this. Para sa lahat ng family natin, lalo-lalo na sa bawat magulang na nakikinig sa akin, sana po, eh, nag-bless kayo kahit pa paano today. Let us all be reminded of our goal to be Christ-like. That's right, to be Christ-like. Isa sa pinakamagandang presentation kay Lord ay eh, ginawa ni Jesus presenting the best example of a relationship between a father and a son. And that is love and obedience of a son to a father. Kung meron tayong gagayahin, gayahin po natin si Jesus. Ang ating minamahal na Heso Kristo, pinakita ang obedience niya hanggang sa kahuli-huli ang hininga niya. Matupad ang gusto ng tatay niya. And we are to keep His commands just as it was said in John 13, 34-35. Ano commandment I give you? That you love one another as I have loved you. That you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have loved one to another. Huwag na natin sabihin na tayo ay na kay Lord. Makikita naman po yan. Alam niyo, sa totoo lang, napakahalaga kung ang pamilya ay na kay Lord. At yan ang isa sa mga sekreto para sa matibay na pamilya sa gitna ng pandemya. Huwag na natin kalilimutan. Mahalaga ang kondisyon ng ating puso. Lahat ng mga absalom dyan, mag-ingat kayo. Makakatapat kayo ng mga joab. Mahalaga rin ang mga nakapaligid sa atin. It's important to be surrounded by the right people. Magpapadala si Lord ng mga husay sa buhay mo. And number three, mahalaga na ang mga magulang ay nakainan. Madali magpatawad, madali magbalik ng tiwala, handang mamatay para sa kanya. Let's all bow our heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, maraming salamat sa mensahe mo today. Lord, I pray for every family listening to me right now who will listen to your word. Lord, I speak restoration in their life. Kung meron po mga relationship ngayon na nasira, Lord, ngayong araw na to, ayusin niyo po yun. Tanggalin niyo po yung galit at sama ng loob ng mga anak sa kanilang mga magulang. Hayaan niyo po na ibalik ang pagpapatawad ng mga magulang sa kanilang mga anak. Turuan niyo sila pareho na magpakumbaba. Ito ay panahon na dapat lahat ng pamilya ay magsama-sama para nang sa ganun harapin ang pandemya nito bilang isang buong pamilya. Lord, I pray that you will give wisdom to the parents on how they can manage their family by checking the conditions of their heart, by checking the people around them, and by definitely understanding your will is better than our will. Lord, ngayon pa lang, I pray for protection sa bawat nakikinig ngayon. To every family, may you envelope them with your blood na hindi papasugin yan ng alaban, hindi sisirain ang pamilya na yan ng alaban. Bagkos, mananatili ang pagmamahal mo. Lord, I pray na gagamit ka ng mga joab, gagamit ka ng mga husay, na magpuprotekta sa mga pamilya, na mag-iingat sa mga pamilya, na magtatayo sa mga dapang pamilya, Panginoon. And Lord, I pray for good health sa bawat isa. In the midst of this pandemic, no illness will befall anyone who hears your word, Father. Maraming salamat, Lord, itinataas namin ang pangalan mo sa buhay ng bawat nakikinig na yun. Amen and amen. And I want to invite all of you there. I want to share with you one thing. The best decision I ever made in my life was when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Pala ako sa iyo, hindi ko ma-explica yung pakiramdam, pero para ako nabunutan ng isang malaking tinik at nagkaroon ako ng pag-asa na hindi ko ma-explica. And I want you to experience the same thing. Kung gusto mo makaranas na yan, oo, oh, maaaring tumanggap ka na dati, maaaring hindi ka pa tumatanggap, I want you to join me in a short prayer na tinuro din sa akin. Alright? But I want you to pray from the heart. Kayo lang dalawa ni Lord mag-uusap. Alam naman niya yung sincerity mo, alam niya kung talagang taos puso mo, idadasal to. And I want you to pray out loud. Kasi sinabi naman, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, di ba, that Jesus is Lord, then you will be saved. Kaya yan ang gagawin natin ngayon. Join me right now. I encourage you right now. 
close your eyes, bow your head. Alam kong marami kang pinagdadaanan ngayon na gusto mong makaranas ng milagro, gusto mong makaranas ng bagong buhay. Kasi sinabi kung sino man daw makipag-isa kay Kristo, siya isang bagong nilalang. So why don't we do that right now? Go ahead, close your eyes. Join me and pray out loud with me. Heavenly Father, I admit I'm a sinner. I also admit that I need you in my life. Lord, mula ngayon, isinusubo ko ang buhay ko sa iyo. Lord, mula ngayon, tinatanggap kita bilang aking Panginoon at tagapagligtas. Kailangan kita, Lord. Pagod na ako. Tanggalin niyo yung galit sa puso ko, Lord. Tanggalin niyo yung sama ng loob ko sa aking mga kapatid, sa aking mga magulang. Palitan niyo po ng pagmamahal. Lord, gusto ko makaranas ng bagong buhay. Maaari ba, Lord, pasukin mo ang buhay ko? Mula sa araw na to, ikaw na ang masunod, hindi na ako. Naniniwala ako na namatay ka sa krus para sa aming kasalanan. Inilibing at nabuhay muli para pagtagumpayan ng kamatayan. Kaya, Lord, starting today, Will you be my Lord and my Savior? Isulat mong pangalan ko sa aklat ng buhay. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen and Amen. Congratulations if you made the decision and you prayed that with me right now. Huwag mong kalilimutan ang araw na ito dahil ito ang iyong spiritual birthday. Sabi sa Bible, If anyone is in Christ, they are no creation. The old is gone, the new is come. Ito yung araw na ikaw ay bagong nila lang, wala na yung dating pagkatao. So congratulations. And there you have it, everyone. Itataas natin ang ating mga kabay. Sama natin ang ating mga pamilya. Come on. Sama-sama tayo lahat. Itataas natin ang ating kamay. And let me bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make His face shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. Sumayo kayo. Magpakaramit. Magmahalan kayo. Magpatawaran kayo. May the Holy Spirit Dwell in each and every one of you. God bless everyone. Woo! So alam na gagawin. Process nyo na po yan. Go back to your family. Ask yourselves a question. Ano ang isang bagay na natukunan ko ngayon? At anong dapat kong gawin tukos na natukunan? The parents encourage your children to process this with you. God bless everyone.